colonial society on the eve of revolution, 1700 to 1775. Take six. Do you know what revolution is? When you win a war against the government. Excellent. These are going to be colonial society before the revolution. We'll get into some of the major events before the revolution. Spain had 32 colonies in North America in 1775, and only 13 of them opted for revolution and independence. In the 1700s, the 13 colonies had less than 300,000 people, but had rapidly growing populations. By 1775, the colonies had over 2.5 million people. As you can see, it grew really high. You can see that on your screen as well. How many people did it grow by? 2.2 million. Excellent job with the math. All right, Thank you. let's take a look. In 1775, the most populous colonies were Virginia, Massachusetts, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, and Maryland, in that order. Wow. 90% of the Americans were rural in 1775. If you don't know what rural means, it means farmland. American had only four real cities in that year, Philadelphia, New York City, Boston, and Charleston. Diversity in the colonies. Most other non-English immigrants, including Huguenots, Welsh, Dutch, Swedes, Jews, Irish, and Swiss, felt no loyalty to the British crown. The population in the 13 colonies was probably the most diverse at earth, on earth at that time. A true melting pot of nationalities. Yes, it was. New England remains mostly English, Puritan, and was the least diverse region. The middle colonies were the most diverse. Most colonial Americans were small farmers. Ministers are the most respected in the communities. Colonial America had a high degree of social mobility, rags to riches stories that were common in America, but very rare in England. Wow. By 1750, 10% of Bostonians and Philadelphians owned two thirds of all the wealth. The English dumped thousands of prisoners on American soil. 90% of Americans were involved in agriculture. Wow, that's cool. The middle colonies grew grain. The Chesapeake colonies grew tobacco. And the south grew rice and indigo. This ties into the fact that most Americans were rural. New England had small farms, and many were engaged in whaling and fishing. The top picture you could see is what a small farm might look like. The bottom picture, the plantation, which was more in the south, you could see bigger farms, yeah. large farms. Okay, the triangular trade, simplified. We have the triangular trade made up only one small part of colonial commerce. Each leg of the triangle made the merchant money. Although manufacturing the colonies was secondary to agriculture, they did produce beaver hats, lumber, and iron ore. Silk building was one of the most important manu manufacturing segments in the colonies. One feature of the American economy that strained the relationship between Britain was the growing desire of Americans to sh trade with other nations and not just England. Americans did to make a lot more money if they could trade with other European nations. This is one of the starting points we see in separation. Made in the USA. By 1770, about 400 ships a year were being made in the colonies, and about one-third of the British merchant marine was made in America. Britain, Britain's limited the population was saturated with American goods by the 1770s. Problems with transportation? Transportation was very slow in colonial America, with very poor dirt trails and roads connecting various points in the colonies. The Congregational Church grew out of the Puritan Church and was the established faith of all New England states except Rhode Island, which always was fiercely independent. Many American ministers talked about politics and denounced British politics. They were pro revolution. Revolution. Good. But it, okay, yeah, pro revolution. The Great Awakening, a series of religious revivals that swept through the colonies in the 1730s and 1740s, a reaction to over a century of loosened Puritanism and Calvinism. An attempt to wake up Christians 
an American with zeal. George Whitefield helped start and then spread the movement with very with fiery sermons in a new evangelical style. Sermons were very emotional and very theatric fire and brimstone. Education. Traditionally, the English believed that education was for the elite leaders of society, not common citizens, and mainly for males. The colonies slowly drifted from the norm and then encompassed more, more, more and more people into education. The Congregational Church in New England thought that all children should know how to read the Bible, so, so read so that they could read the Bible. Education in the colonies. Elementary education varied widely in the colonies, but was especially strong in New England. Nine local colleges were established in the colony era. Primarily to train future ministers. The culture and the arts. Most artists and writers had to travel to Europe for education and lot in most of their work. Self-taught Benjamin Franklin published Poor Richard's Almanac from 1732 to 1758, which was full of homespun advice, emphasizing thrift and industry, morality, and common sense. Only the Bible is read by more people in the colonies. Known as the first civilized American. The colonial press. By 1776, the colonies had... About 50 public libraries. 40 colonial newspapers and many more printing presses. Colonial government. By 1775, eight of the 13 colonies had royal governors appointed by the king. Three colonies, Maryland, Pennsylvania, and Delaware, were under proprietors who chose the governor. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Two colonies, Connecticut and Rhode Island, elected their own governors and had their self-governing characters. Charters. Hmm. Charters. Almost every colony had a bicameral, two-house legislation. The upper house was usually appointed by... The crown in the royal colonies, which means the king, the proprietor in the proprietary colonies, and the voters in charter colonies. The lower house was chosen by the people in individual colonies, although most colonies... Co- colonies required proper ownership to vote. Property ownership. So you had to own a house or property or land or business in order to vote. So if you didn't, you couldn't vote. Self-taxation through local representation was a rare privilege that Americans cherished above most others. Compared to elsewhere on Earth? Americans enjoyed the high standard of living. They had more political, religious, and economy opportunity. They almost certainly ate better, too. Similarities between the colonies. Some degree of self-rule, some some religious toleration, and 3,000 miles away from Great Britain. Differences in economy, patterns of settlement, traditions, Government, religion, ex-Puritans in New in New England did not celebrate Christmas because they thought it was a uh, it was an offensive reminder of popery. Popery. So they they were offensively reminded that the Pope was there. All right, this has been the Eve of the Revolution. Thank you so much for watching.